Um, and Nicole, I know um, you've you've gone underweight the U.S. and I'll, I'll just posit the idea that U.S. companies are better positioned because they've shored up their balance sheets because their their um, economy's still been strong. So, what, what's what's the rationale to move money away from the U.S.? I understand valuations, but maybe they've got a better chance of getting through this or, or maintaining their earnings levels. And, and Rob, perhaps they do, but uh, even if we take out some of you know the, the tech wonders, the Magnificent Seven, that S&P is still fairly lofty at a 17 forward PE, and we're looking at about 6% earnings growth on quite high margins. And we just don't think there's enough margin of safety. We, and then you can get better at the returns elsewhere. So we like Japanese equity. It's one of the few markets where you're seeing that the yield curve isn't inverted. We're getting relative earnings growth. There's a story there with returning capital, we've actually heard that, you know, there's there's almost a directive that towards the companies that are so cash flush, you need to start returning that you need to have price to books above one. So we we don't really know if the US will fall, when it will fall, but we do know that there are better places that where we can find value, um, no matter whether that, that US economy does eventually slow down or not. I laugh, I laugh because you, you talk about the, the balance sheets and maybe they're more resilient because of all those things. The Chinese tech companies all sit with net mm. cash. and yeah. mm. You know what I mean? They're, they're, it's not like their balance sheets are at risk either and they're all buying back their share at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, just because someone's done all those things that I said, the, you know, the many other companies that are sitting net cash and it's still an opportunity. Mm. It's quite interesting that you say that because yeah. South Africa and China suffer from government Mm. risk if you take that out the assets are both yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that can change yeah i'd say there's government risk around the world these days but that's absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. but it's it's i think it's way over priced in 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 those two economies where else are you potentially keeping an eye on to see what what might um evolve in a in a local election or a local market well, it's a South African, <laughs> South African <laughs> right. election is, right. is all, uh, obviously very important, and it's a important inflection point because your um, your majority party is is going to go below could be go below fifty, and one will see what sort of alliances they they strike to to keep it there. And I mean, if we strike an alliance with uh, or if ANC strikes an alliance with EFF, I think. Uh, Global investors have already fled from South Africa, but I think the last remaining few dollars that, that are here will, will also flow out and uh, sort of negative sentiment. But I mean, it, it creates opportunities. South Africans are very resilient. We've been through a lot. Um, we've been th- through, through high inflation. We've been uh, through capital controls. Um, we, we've been through uh, very high interest rates, political unrest, and we somehow Im- uh, emerge stronger in the end. So, and, and South African corporates specifically are very resourceful in, in tackling this problem. So, if you look at our valuations relative to sort of uh, the the problem set currently, um, I think it, it screams it screams value. Um, what's going to be the catalyst for a return of capital to South Africa? Um, you can't see it at the moment, but in the meantime, you you're clipping very nice dividends and sort of low uh, earnings growth that you don't need a lot of emerging earnings markets growth. if they get attractive again they're going to come and they have to come and, and because we've got a liquid yeah. capital market yeah, they're so going to come for us yeah that's why your banks will do well and the emerging markets should theoretically yeah. recover into a global yeah. and if you have the if you're all surprised on dollar interest rates and go to five like you say and it's five big cuts and yeah. I, I think you're going to see emerging markets do well makes sense mm. Is, it, is that part of your portfolio, is emerging market exposure? As an SA investor, I could sit here and say to you, well, I've got enough emerging market risk in my portfolio anyway. Why do I want to take... No, what we're this? saying is that if the big fund managers have to offshore have to buy emerging markets, South Africa will be part of that rush mm. and we will be pulled along. And do you think that's uh, as the status quo or do things still need to change here? I don't think we can invest like thinking like that. We're just saying it's okay. another positive. No, you, you, get, you, you want to identify kind of the, catalysts. The famous saying is all, rising tide lifts all ships. I mean, that's the, mm. I think Walter's saying is you, whether we improve or not, if the interest rates go down 1% in the US, eventually people are looking outside the US and it, they kind of 
pay less attention to the bad stuff as yeah. everyone goes up together. Kind of. I even look at Transnet chip <laughs> at a stage. <laughs> I remember really in, the last, in the last <laughs> time when rates were really... percent cuts in the US to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. in the last r- mania in 2008, they were buying Cecil convertible debt. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't believe those yields. It, there's always those clever people who want to come buy things, yeah? Mm. No, but, I mean, there, but there are a lot of private deals that are taking place. Mm. So, for example, there's a lot of uh, negative sentiment towards Africa from Israeli investors. So they are selling their assets and someone's buying their assets mm. right. and they're paying quite a healthy, healthy clip for it. We were speaking to some of the private equity guys the other day and they were saying that actually on about 80% of their investments, they're actually seeing growth this year because mm. it goes to your point, the resilience of the of the SA investor who finds a way to make it happen, yeah. who's already moved on to generators. Something like 60-60 has apparently got their profits up about eight times, eightfold. So there are there are little, you know, pockets of ingenuity, and you're getting a lot of these assets cheap. And it's the only thing that stopped them is regulation. So if you take, for example, I think it's one of the education companies wants have nursing for for nurses because they're sure you know government will not let them train nurses. Mm. That is bizarre. Or having a a campus to teach doctors that are outside them. These are not difficult problems. The money is there. Um, and I think they can be solved. Uh, they will. They are basically being solved.